So hello everyone and welcome back to the mini interview series we are doing from the data platform Women in Tech group with the amazing women speakers at the SQL Bits conference. This conference is happening between the dates of March 14th and 18th of this year at Wales. If you're looking for a good data conference to attend, you may want to consider this. There are options to attend virtually as well as in person if you choose to. Um, our speaker for today, her name is Holly Whittles, and she is going to be speaking to the power of people in your business. Uh, the timing listed here are on local Wales time. So if you are there in person, um, this is the time for the talk. If not, please look up the time that's appropriate for you on the website. Um, our sponsor for this event is SQL Taylor Consulting. Joe Fleming donates $20 to Girls Who Code for every guest we have on the show. And if you're looking for someone for your remote DBA needs, he may be a good choice. Thank you, Joe, for doing this. So let's get started. Hi, tell Holly. Us, tell us something Hi. about yourself. Um, so you broke up slightly then. I, I was asked to tell, tell us something about yourself. Oh, okay, great. So my name is Holly Whittles. I'm a director of Purple Frog Systems. So we are a data analytics consultancy based in the UK, but we work with clients all across the world. And the Fraggle Rocks, do you not do Fraggle, Fraggle Works? <laughs> I'm sorry, Fraggle Works. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Um, so I'm also director of Fraggle Works, which is a digital marketing consultancy. So I do keynote talks, um, a bit of social media consultancy. Um, but to be honest, the majority of my time is spent in, spent in Purple Frog. Okay. And where are you located? Uh, so we're right in the heart of the UK. So we're in a, a town called uh, Telford, where SQL Bits has visited in the past. Okay. And have you attended in the past? Uh, yes, I've been to quite a few of them now, actually. So uh, I've got various different connections with SQL Bits, uh, but it's only recently that I put myself forward as a speaker. So this oh, is your hi. first time speaking? Um, I've spoken twice before. I've done one in person and one virtual. Okay. Uh -huh. Awesome. And so your session is the power of the people in your business. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about. So I'm running a tech consultancy, um, but for me, I think SQL Bits, and um, there's a really great opportunity to submit soft skill sessions. So I was thinking, well, what can I submit to add, you know, extra flavor around all the technical sessions? And we've spent 20 years growing our business and a lot of people sort of ask us for advice and what we've done. So I thought, actually, why don't I do a session about how we've actually grown the business, how we recruit for people, um, how we organize ourselves, um, the certifications that we've done and how we've um, developed our internal people culture. And um, so for me, the power of the business is the people. Um, so every year, we take our entire company to SQL Bits um, and we allow oh, nice. the entire week just to go to all the different sessions. We encourage them to apply to speak, but we literally lock the doors and we spend the whole week at SQL Bits. Um, but it's that's part of our culture. It's learning and growing and empowering yourself. So we get them to do the Microsoft certifications. We encourage them to blog. We encourage them to speak at other user groups and events. Um, so I just thought, actually, this might be a really fascinating talk as to how we've grown from a one man band to full scale consultancy. That sounds like an awesome session. Yeah. And that's a great perk. I mean, it, it's one thing for a, especially a consulting agency to say, oh, growth mindset. We, we want everybody to have continual learning and and do those things, but then not allow time or invest a budget or, you know, uh, really support doing those things and, and just kind of saying, oh, growth mindset, but not, not putting the, the, the money where they're uh -huh, exactly. Yeah. 
Definitely. And we mandate it as part of their uh, weekly hours that they have to spend a couple of hours each week learning about something, whether it's consuming a podcast or reading a blog or writing something. It doesn't even have to be in technology that they're working with. It's all about growing your mind and, and having that real growth mindset, because we feel that to be industry leaders, we need to have the best team and they need to be alert and know everything that they can possibly know. So, you know, no one knows everything there's always new stuff coming out especially in our world of digital yes Mm -hmm. absolutely so I guess anybody that has a job or wants a job or hires people is target audience for you (laughs) absolutely but then there's also various other things that we've done and you know things like we've become stem ambassadors which is a big network in the UK to promote science and technology engineering and maths and we go into schools and colleges to give talks to get them excited Um, We're also part of the enterprise advisor programs. That's where you get paired with a local school and you go in and you talk to the children about this is why you're learning maths and this is the career it could lead to. And you could learn Python and you could learn SQL and DAX and then you could work in cloud technologies and then you can do machine learning. And this is what we've done and get them really excited about the real world application as to why they're learning these subjects. So we're trying to like grow people from within the education system into our digital world. That's awesome. That that's a great community involvement and and yeah, especially getting girls interested in it. So I was really really pleased this week. They asked me to go and do a uh, guest lecture at uh, the University of Chester, and uh, they've got a data science conversion course. Um, so they invited me in to talk uh, a bit about data science, but also about. Um, the industry itself and a lot of the room were actually girls because that was one of the key parts of that program and that scheme it was to get more girls into technology so I was just like made up I was like this is brilliant yes you know, well no, done to all of you. yes as the women in tech group we're, we're real happy to hear about that yeah, yeah that's amazing tech. I wish we had something like that here it, that's yeah really cool. yeah it yeah. was really, really diverse as well. So, you know, I just thought this is brilliant. I love how they've really focused on that. And hopefully we can then start changing the mix, you know, throughout the industry. Mm-hmm. For sure. And we need more people at your level, more women in the yes. EO suite of consulting agencies and in, in the, you know, the, the tech world and, and just having that that recognition and, and you know, getting yeah to the top and you know being the boss you're you're yeah boss. definitely I mean yeah. my back, my background's always been in IT like I started life as a software tester but now um, running uh, my own business then the role that I've ended up doing is information security and also HR so you know every business needs different roles performing so actually I've come out of being technical uh, but I very much drive where the company's uh, going. Uh, so we, we've got uh, our board is 50 50. We've got two female members, we've got two male members on the board. Um, in fact, we just recruited another person. So, yeah, we're trying to keep the balance really uh, strong. That's good to hear. Congratulations. That's yeah, that's really thank you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's really important to to bring all these different personalities and different ways of thinking, though, because when you're working collaboratively, there's so many different approaches that you can take. So I think that's really important. So that's something else I wanted to bring out in the talk. And, you know, something that we actively recruit for, especially when you start doing things like uh, psychometric testing and working out people's personality types. Um, You need to have a good mix of all those different people to be an effective team. And I think that um, bringing people in from other industries and other backgrounds that you can teach the technical skills to, I can, I can show you how to do these things, but presented with a problem, they're going to come at it from a completely different viewpoint. You know, as a software developer, you, you do all of this stuff and you build this great product and, you know, you send it out to the wild and your, your people use it. And I always used to like to go and sit with my my users when we did, you know, an in-house development and watch them use my app. 
And there was this one thing I, I thought, oh, well, they need to know that they did this. And it would pop up like a little message box and they'd have to push the OK button. And when I went and watched them, I'm like, oh, my God, it is so annoying that they have to push that OK button every time <laughs> nothing happened. And I went back and I took it out. I mean, but it's not until you go and actually watch somebody use what you've built that you can actually see those types of things that as a developer, you thought, oh, this is going to be this is going to be great. They need to know this. And as a user, they're going, man, I hate this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and very rarely do the developers get to get that. I hate that thing. So I know. Go back and take it to, you know, take the user feedback and, and fix whatever it is that they've done. And so. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of how I fell more into the people role, because when I was uh, doing software testing, um, I was always really good at liaising with the developers and sort of understanding where they were coming from. And I was often then the interface and the interaction between what the techies were saying, where they're like, yeah, it works on my machine. And then the users who were going, well, it's not working on mine. And uh, <laughs> or I've pressed this button and this has happened. And the developers like, well, I wasn't expecting you to press that button. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I always hints. I always do tap tap enter tap tap enter why on earth would you do space bar space bar tab? <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah yeah <laughs> I had exactly that he was like why are you tapping through the fields and I'm like well that isn't that the quickest way of doing it and it's like oh I wasn't expecting you to do that <laughs> each person's definition of the quickest way is so different yes absolutely <laughs> You know, I mean, the world is completely, I'm talking 20 years ago when I was doing that, the world's changed completely now. I mean, uh, you know, especially with things like mobiles and, you know, we weren't sort of developing for that kind of technology back then. So Also partly, people skills are so devalued, especially in the tech industry, right? I don't even like that term soft skills because it it's harder than doing tech work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's much harder and it is so devalued, especially with, you know, to some degree with the, with, uh, with agile ways of development and the, the thought that you don't need managers at all. Uh, I don't particularly agree with that. And I think, you know, given a conflict between people and a difficult tech issue, which one would you choose? I know which one I would choose. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes, but you want to dismiss it as something soft, right? I don't like that at all. It's It's harder. It's much harder. Yeah. Yes. And the other, yeah. the other challenge around that as well is, you know, as we're sort of technically classed as a small business because we're only about sort of 20 people, right, right, right. Um, it, it's kind of the skills you need as a, an Azure data engineer or a Power BI developer, as well as being really technically competent. You really do need those interpersonal skills because you're more likely to be talking to senior leadership team mm -hmm. than someone that's working in a big organization that's got layers of project managers and technical portfolio leads and blah, blah, blah all around them. Well, you don't probably don't need to talk to the client because there's people that do that for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, I love it. So since you've been to bits before, are you looking forward to the to the party? Is the party as great as everybody says? Absolutely. The party is like the best bit. Well, for me anyway. And uh, yeah, I ordered all of our costumes and they arrived the other day. So what oh, we all yeah, so what, we, what we always try and do going to be. Yeah, we always try and do our own brand. So whatever the brand is, so it's Dungeons and Dragons this time, we always bring like a purple flavor into it and we always go coordinated. So oh, I'm not going to reveal okay, what our outfits right. are, but they, they are, we, we, we will be able to tell who we are. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited to see that. Yeah. But and I think my, fa my favorite sequel bits party was when we did the disco um, 80s one and we, were, we all went as Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> <laughs> that fun that sounds awesome <laughs> yeah that was fun and then thursday is like the quiz night is that is yeah. that a lot of fun too it is definitely a lot of fun although um i did i did win one year but i wasn't allowed to have the prize because <laughs> Because I, I'm married to one of the organizers, so they were like, yeah, that, that's not right. So I had to give the prize back. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's a great way of bringing everyone together because what you find with the Thursday is that um, people don't necessarily sit in their organizations. They, you know, the tables are all spread out. It's a great way of networking and meeting other attendees. Yeah, I'm really excited. This is my first bits. Um, is it? Oh, yeah. wow. So, and I missed the call for speakers and I was so sad because all my speaker friends were going and I'm like, I'm just going to go. So I just bought my ticket and I'm going. <laughs> so Definitely. I'm excited, yes. But uh, we have just been amazed at the number of non-English, you know, UK speakers 
I mean, oh. we've talked with, with women from all over the world. It, it's just been amazing the diversity of the women that have, have that submitted and then were selected to, to speak. And so it's, yes, it, it seems like it's going to be a really great event. I can't wait to yeah. see all the, the women in person and then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say to our team. I said, this is not just a UK conference. People are flying in from all over the place. It's, yes. you know, it's a really big deal. Yes, really big deal. I'm really <laughs> excited. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Holly, for your time. Yes, you we're welcome. talking with us. Yeah, we'll you're soon. welcome. See all you right. in mm, like five weeks. Yeah, see you soon. Let's equal bits. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.